Good day, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. I'm Steve Mathis. I'm here with a Nikon Z7. Eh. At any rate, I'm here to talk today about exposure compensation. And I want to talk to you about it today because I'm doing workshops all the time out here, private workshops with people in the Tetons. And I am noticed a real common theme amongst uh, all different skill levels, from total beginner to really highly skilled photographers. Uh, and a lot of them aren't using exposure compensation at all or don't really understand kind of how and when to use it. And that it seems to be a real common theme. So uh, I wanted to talk about that a little bit today and uh, just give you a basic kind of uh, primer on it and not go like deep, 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 but try and keep it quick and simple so that you can start using it uh, and learn it and start applying it. And uh, it'll definitely improve your photography if you're not using it at all or if you're not quite sure how to best use it. So let's jump right in. Exposure compensation works on any of the automatic modes on your DSLR or mirrorless camera. So that'd be the P, the S, and the A mode. So aperture priority, shutter priority, and then whatever P stands for. And then it also works on manual mode only if you're using auto ISO. And the that because that is an automatic mode where the camera is determining the proper exposure using the aperture that you set, the shutter speed that you set, and then it's going to adjust the ISO to make what it thinks is the proper exposure. And I think that's a key term there of what the camera thinks the proper exposure is because the camera's got a little computer in there and a meter that it is using to try and guess what the proper exposure should be based on what you're pointing the camera at. And in a case like uh, a simple case like a, a white wall here, if I set my exposure compensation to zero, I'm just in aperture priority here, and I point it at this white wall. Well, I think even you know from way far over there on the back of the screen, you can tell that that's not a white wall anymore. It's now a gray wall. So I'm going to go to plus two stops. I'm going to add two stops of light using the exposure compensation. And now I'm going to point it at that white wall. And now we have a white wall. It's great. Uh, but that plus two now, when I pointed at a dark wall, well, now it's made it a white wall instead of being a black fireplace there. So I know I want to be, let's say, at minus 1.3 to make that fireplace dark. And now it is at minus 1.3. Similarly, now I've got a dark wall there. So it really depends what you're pointing it at on what you want it to do. The camera is doing its best to guess on what the exposure should be, and it doesn't know on a white wall or a dark uh, a white subject or a dark subject. Uh, the camera, in a really basic kind of oversimplified sense, the camera wants to make things gray. And so if, if I'm photographing on the snow, a snowy scene, all that snow, it's bright white, the snow, but the camera sees all that bright white and it goes, whoa. That's really bright. I need to make that gray. So if you're taking photos at zero exposure compensation in the snow, they're like always going to be underexposed and dull gray and yucky. Uh, if you're photographing something dark, like a dark forest, uh, if you've got an owl in a really dark forest and I'm at zero, it's going to overexpose that whole scene because the camera sees all that darkness and goes, wow, I need to make this brighter to make it gray. I need to make this brighter and it's going to brighten up that dark forest where in reality it's a dark forest and I want that forest to be dark. And then the owl is gray, so I've got a dark forest and now that owl's really going to pop from that dark forest. So on a dark forest I want to tell it negative whatever, one or two or three stops uh, to make that forest actually dark the way I want it to be. So that's the very simplified version of what the camera's doing in there. Start using it, start playing with it, um, get some experience using it, and you'll learn really quickly how it works. The next question is, what metering mode do I use? Because that is going to make a difference on how your camera is going to be exposing the scene using these automatic modes. So I suggest that people who are uh, kind of using exposure compensation and learning it the most simple way to start, I think, is to use spot metering. 
And the reason is you've got, instead of metering off of the whole scene or the center weighted, it's a, it's a small area. So if I point that small area on my subject, say it's a snowy owl, that's a white owl. Uh, and then whatever the, the background, the surrounding environment is, it's just gonna meter off of that owl. And I know if I do like, it depends on the light a little bit, but if I do plus two off of that white creature, uh, if it's a mountain goat or whatever, a white creature that I want to be white, um, a trumpet or swan, plus two off of that white creature is going to give me a white creature instead of a gray creature. Uh, similarly, if I'm shooting a bull moose and I, I want to spot meter off of his eyeball, uh, if I'm putting, I'm going to put that spot right on his eyeball and I'm going to want to be at like between minus one, minus 1 1.7, something like that. Depends on the light. But uh, I'm going to want to be negative exposure compensation there because if I leave it at zero, it's going to look at that dark moose and it's going to go, wow, this scene is so dark. It doesn't know that that's a dark moose. It just sees that it's a very dark scene. It's going to try and brighten that up and it's going to overexpose everything, the antlers, the environment, everything else. So uh, spot meter, I think, is the simplest way to learn because it just gives you a, a really small area. You know, like I'm spot metering off of the grass or the snow or that dark moose fur or that white trumpet or swan head or whatever. And you know exactly what that's metering off of. And then you can adjust your exposure compensation and really start to get to feel for uh, how far negative do I need to go to keep this moose fur dark the way it really is. And every camera meters things a little bit differently and exposes things a little bit differently. They all have different algorithms and computer programs that are trying to decide what that is. So it'll take some experimentation and some experience but uh, it's, it's really important, I think, to start using it. And uh, it's a really powerful tool. So I encourage you to, to start doing that. And uh, it doesn't, really doesn't matter which of those metering modes you're using. I just suggest spot metering because it's simpler conceptually versus a matrix metering, for instance, in the Nikon, is looking at the entire scene, everything that's in the viewfinder. And that might be a bright sky and a you know, a mid-tone green, and then a dark bear. Well, it's hard without a lot of experience to try and guess what the camera is thinking in that scene. Whereas if I just put it on a spot meter and put that on the bear, I know that that bear wants to be darker than a zero. So I'm gonna dial in minus one right out of the gate. And then on a mirrorless camera, I could look and go minus one, perfect. If if I'm on my D Nikon D850, I'll dial in minus one, take a quick exposure, look at it and go, yep, that's right, and then I know. Uh, that's one of the great benefits of mirrorless cameras is that you can adjust that exposure compensation on the fly and you can see as I'm adjusting it what it's doing to the scene. And now we've got a white wall again, okay? So pick, pick one of those metering modes and use it, get used to it, get some experience with what the camera is actually thinking and how it's exposing the scene. And um, you'll pick up on it really quick, but it's going to make a big difference in getting your photography kind of stepped up a notch and making sure you're getting your exposures um, where you want them to be. Take control of that camera, okay? So uh, thanks for watching. I'll mention I do private workshops here in the Tetons year round. I have a Yellowstone winter workshop coming up in January, and I have an East Africa workshop coming up in February. It's going to be awesome. So please check those out on my website. Links below. And then once you're done with that, have a great day. And I'll see you on the next video. Later.